In today's video, I'm going to be doing an oil change on this Audi 80 Cabriolet. It's fitted with the Volkswagen 1.8 ADR 20 valve four cylinder engine. I'll show you a little bit about the engine, where everything's located, and the tools that I'll be using to do this oil change. So, currently, it's quite a cold day, it's about zero degrees, so I'm just running it up to temperature just to make the oil a little bit thinner so that it drains a little bit easier. We'll cut back once we're ready. That's the car up to temperature now. So in order to do an oil change on these five valve engines, again, as simple as any other, you've got your filler cap, dipstick, but the thing I do want to show you, and I said it was simple, doesn't mean it's easy, is the oil filter. Now, you can just see the writing of the oil filter. I'll just put my hand in the picture. There. So it is diagonally facing towards the back of the engine. It is an absolute nightmare to get to. I don't know whether access would be any easier underneath. Probably not. There's actually a drive shaft in the way there. But you can just see it there. Very difficult to get to. I always have an absolute war. Uh, I've managed to slacken it off though, so we'll now get on with draining the oil. For this oil change, I'm going to be using an oil extractor. Uh, these can be had um, on Amazon, eBay, for around about £40 for a laser or silver line one. You'll pay double for one that's got a peel of sticker on it, but it's exactly the same item. I'll let you see it. Here it is here, so it works on vacuum pressure. You've got the long thin lance, this goes right down the dipstick tube into the bottom of the sump. And you just simply pump this handle here. There's also a spout for here, so once you're done, you can easily pour your oil into your waste container without any mess at all. So the first thing we need to do is give this a wipe. It's been sitting on the shelf. This goes right inside your engine, so it's got to be super clean. Okay, so that's the lance down inside the engine. Make sure you also take off your oil cap, just to give a little bit of um, extra ventilation to help the oil drain out. So I'll show you now how this works. Depending on the size of the engine and the size of the sump, that'll take you anything between 15 minutes to half an hour. Um, make sure the oil is really thin, have the car running for a good 15 minutes beforehand. That means that it'll travel down the lance really easily and you won't have to put too much effort into uh, the manual action of the pump. We'll cut back when it's all drained out. So that's the oil filter out, you can see there's the the old one, the new one, same same type, it's a ma male, mal, however you pronounce it. So with these ones, all you do, that's the old one, put a thin smear of oil around this seal here, just take some new stuff. In this case I'm using Castro GTX Ultra Clean 10W40, got it from OP Oils, they do a service pack with that and that for about 35 quid. I think it must be quite good oil. And here's the oil drained out. So that is just over four litres. 
So, hope we've got enough. Let's go ahead and put this filter in the car. Right, that's the engine oil filled up. I used 10W40, which is a recommended grade for the Volkswagen 1.8 ADR engine. So what we'll do now is I'll start the engine up, let the oil fill the filter and check the level again. Just a wee top up. So I'll just keep checking this until the level is correct. Right, I'll change all done. All I've got to do now is to write it in the book. While I'm here, I might as well show you a couple of points about the Volkswagen 1.8 ABK engine. Uh, also seen in Audis such as this. This is a 2000 Audi 80 Cabriolet. It was in Golfs, uh, Passats probably as well, various other VAG era products at that time. It's also in turbo form um, in the likes of the Audi TT and Audi S3 so it is quite a well used engine across the range. Um, one of the things to remember is, is this engine has a timing belt and it also has a damped tensioner so it's oil damped and you must replace that with the timing belt with this special damped tensioner. Now it does cost a little bit more but it has to be done and this one here I changed the timing belt on this in April 2019, yeah, 10th of April 2019 at 103,980 miles. So the car's got about 108,000 on it now. Interesting thing about this car as well, you can see this reservoir here with the green fluid. That is actually LHM, hydraulic fluid, like you, uh, Citroën's use. And we might not be able to pick this up in the camera. I don't think we can. Probably not, you probably won't know what I'm pointing at, but just right there, see if you can see it, yes, see it just right there, that spherical thing there, that's a brake accumulator, often called a bomb, works like a citron, it's a sphere that provides pressure to the braking system and the power steering system, so as you'll see, when you look at the brake reservoir, this car does not have a separate brake servo, I found that quite interesting when I first bought the car, couldn't believe it. French technology on a German car. I've actually got a spare one of these through the back. What I'll do actually is I'll see if I can drag it out and show you what it looks like. In the murky depths of my spare stash in the garage, we have a brake bomb or brake accumulator for an Audi 80 in nice condition. So you can see here that all these morass of pipes but it is connected to the rest of the power steering system. So if we go back to the car now, let's walk out the garage. Let's focus on it. Ah, you can see it there, right there. What you'll find is, is if you're driving along and you press the brakes hard and the brake light flashes 
intermittently on your dashboard, a bit like you know, like an indicator on off, and that means that the accumulator is struggling to keep pressure, and it needs to be replaced. Sometimes, if this car's been left for a few weeks on startup, the brake lamp will flash, maybe for about five seconds, until the accumulator builds up pressure, but it doesn't flash uh, in operation. So when the car's been driven, it doesn't flash at all. So just that's something to look out for when you're looking at these cars. They don't all have it. Some of the V6s do have a servo. I think it really just depends on the date of manufacture. So this is the car that I won for £12 in a raffle. Still going strong MOT next month. Hopefully it'll pass.